Hello, internets, and welcome to another thrilling episode of Chris's Mailbox, the exciting internet video series in which I open my mail. Today we have a two-in-one video episode. See, here it meets its two things. It's a mailbox because I'm opening my mail. Well, you can see it's sort of already open. And it's also an unboxing because I, I know what's in here and I decided I, I was not going to do one of these mailbox things because it's really a, kind of a pain to open your mail this way. But uh, then I, I was like, well, you know what's in here is something that people want to see. And um, some people in particular probably really want to see this. And so maybe I'll just go ahead and I will make a double feature here, which is uh, an unboxing, but it also qualifies as a mailbox. So this, um, you might be able to see on here, hopefully you can see on here, and I'll turn it over here in case that wasn't working. This is the new Wi-Fi Nomiku. Nomiku, let's cook better together. This is a, uh, another sous vide machine, and uh, this one came with a t-shirt here, which says NOM on it. At least it says NOM, I don't know, it might say Iku on the bottom. I don't know, I don't know where the name comes from on this thing, Nomiku. Uh, it sounds, you know, it's got that Japanese type thing, but it's not, I don't think it is. Um, it might just be for the NOM, you know, for the NOMs, Nomiku. Anyway, they gave me a t-shirt uh, and this thing. Uh, this is a Kickstarter, so in fact, I'll be right back. I want to check on this. Let me be really clear, by the way. This is not uh, paid product placement or one of those things I got sent to do a video about. I, I paid for this. Uh, I backed this on Kickstarter. Um, I paid $149 in uh, September of 2014. Uh, it is now, as I'm recording this, September of 2016. So that is... Uh, almost exactly two years. Uh, this originally was intended to, estimated delivery was March 2015, so uh, is, it's uh, quite a bit late, as you can tell from the dates, um, and uh, typical of Kickstarter projects. Yes, yeah, so they, uh, I think they had a $200,000 goal uh, they got seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, uh, and one hundred and fifty of that, one hundred and fifty dollars of that was me. Um, I mentioned this only. Uh, I, I've I've backed a number of Kickstarter projects, and I'm used to them being um, late. Uh, sometimes they don't deliver at all, but mostly they're just tremendously late and then disappointing. Um, this is uh, this is one where the uh, Kickstarter backers. Uh, you know, a lot of people were just up in arms and really, really ticked off that it was taking so long. Uh, for a while, the communications were not so good. Um, I really don't follow that drama. I don't care. I've never gone on Kickstarter to uh, angrily demand um, uh, restitution. But uh, anyway, I'm back for number 2449, and so I received mine in early September uh, 2016 for those following along at home. So um, I did I did get this t-shirt and it did come in this box. Oh, here we go. It's actually, it's on here. So it says, uh, thank you for your support. Christopher, 2449 out of 5,000. So it's, uh, uh, it's, you know, individually numbered. Hand hammered sous vide device. I am really having trouble getting the box open. So it just seems to just have a cardboard sleeve. But um, it's on there really tight. There's no tape. Okay, there we go. It's just, just stuck a little bit. Okay, so it seems that what we've got here is a dual box setup. Uh, yeah, the top. So this top is just it's got some rather uh, dense cardboard type material, and uh, here's the. Nomiku inside of the box. It's uh, a little cardboard dust on it, but it doesn't seem like it's been damaged in shipping or has <clears throat> fallen out or anything. Um, quick start guide and uh, Lisa Fetterman. I think that's the is that the person behind this thing. This seems to be a book uh, telling me that there's book on sale November first. Yay. 
All right, anyway, let's take this thing out. So that's that seems to be what you get. Uh, the quick start guide, rather dense box, an ad for a book, and the unit itself. So uh, here we go. It has a uh, it has a, an attached cord. It's not detachable. Uh, it appears that let's see. I could read the quick start guide, of course, but get the impression. There's some little tabs here, so this appears to come out. I don't know why, maybe for cleaning. Uh, do you have to take it out to use it? I don't, I don't know. Is this just a storage mechanism? I guess I'll look in the guide and we'll figure that out. Uh, it's definitely got holes in there, so it could allow water to circulate if it's meant to do that. Um, and uh, attachment thing there. It's got the screen. This appears to rotate. And uh, some kind of a water inlet or outlets on the side and one on the bottom. And uh, it's it's heavy, solid, feels solid. Um, plastic. It's got some little grommets over the screws. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick look at the uh, Oh, I should say, um, for, for those, if anybody's watching this and, and don't, are not familiar with the, with the sous vide here, the idea with this is, um, is that you cook your food in a water bath. That is, uh, you, ta you take the uh, food you want to cook and you put it into a plastic bag. Uh, you usually get, get all the air out of the bag, possibly a vacuum seal. Um, and then you seal the bag up, you put the bag in a pot of water, and you keep the water at a very, very constant temperature, which is the, actually the final temperature you want your food to be at. And so the idea is that, you know, if you want to cook your steak to, uh, you know, 147 and a half degrees or something, then you can do that. Um, and, uh, you know, the laws of thermodynamics say that uh, if you put it in, a, in some water that's that temperature, then the, the thing is going to come to exactly that temperature. It's, it cannot get any hotter. So it, uh, it really kind of can't overcook. Um, it's a very slow way of, of cooking, but also very accurate, and you can get the, get the food um, a, a consistent temperature throughout. So um, as there are some pictures of meat on here, and they're, they're uniformly pink edge to edge, they don't have that gray ring around the outside. That's kind of the idea. Uh, it's useful for a bunch of things. It's, you know, it's not the be-all, end-all of cooking. Uh, it started with these molecular gastronomy people who were using uh, industrial laboratory equipment that cost thousands of dollars that was really designed for, like, you know, keeping biological samples at a, at a very precise temperature. And then as, you know, the, these, uh, these fancy chefs who could afford to do stuff like that started doing it, then, you know, people got the idea of making versions for the home cook. So... Some of them uh, are a big box. There are, there are basically two different styles you might get. Some of them have a box that you put the water into, and they, you know, it's a self-contained thing, and it does the heating and circulating. Um, and then there are this. There's this style, which you bring your own vessel. So you take a pot full of water and you stick this in, and um, set the controls. And basically, it'll have a pump, a uh, circulator pump, and a heater, and it'll do that. Now I have one of these already. I have something over here. I have something here called the Sans Air. Sans Air, I don't know. Uh, and the idea, I mean, this is exactly the same thing. Right? So it's a sous -vide, whoops, sous vide cooker that you put into a pot like that. It's got a dial on here. You turn screen that shows you the temperature. Um, you plug it in, you set it, and uh, it goes ahead and does that thing. Um, water comes in the bottom and out the little hole. Uh, so in comparison, th now this one was also a Kickstarter. I think this might have been the most, uh, at some point, it was the most successful Kickstarter ever or something like that. Um, they definitely had some, uh, uh, some success with that. And they're actually, in fact, onto a new model that they're going to do with Wi-Fi. This one, I believe, is, has Wi-Fi. It's obviously a different company, decided to do their own take on it. This, the new Nomiku, uh, I think they already had one, so this is kind of their second go at it. Um, there are, these things are, Chef Steps has one. Um, they're just, uh, they're everywhere. They're ubiquitous. Um, 
This I think is supposed to retail for $249, which is probably a bit much. Uh, I think you know we're going to see basically everybody will have an immersion circulator at some point. So we got the selection knob, the screen, the menu button, the action button, the clip, uh, the removable sheath, sheath release, um, some water level guidance, which is on the, okay, so this does, all right, the, 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 the holes are in fact exposed here, so I guess the sheath probably stays on. I can't see otherwise why they would have gone to that effort. So that appears to be the min water level and the max water level. So you just have to make sure that whatever pot it fits into, you fill the water up between those two, uh, enough to cover the food. And then it's got the Wi-Fi, um, clip to the side of a pot, add water to the pot, um, plug in the power cord, turn the knob, pair with apps, da 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 so, I guess uh, I didn't actually intend to do a demonstration, but I might as well. Um, I'm here, and so I'm gonna try this out. Why don't we try it out together? I've got this pot, I'm gonna put some water in it, and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got some water in here. I've changed up the shot a little. Uh, I'm going, it's kind of a weird cooking show here. Um, I'm going to be doing this I'm kind of crowded in here behind the camera. But anyway, we'll place this in the water. Um, let's see, that amount of water is just, just above, well, I say that amount, I don't know if you can see that, um, but I really don't care. It's just above the, uh, the minimum level, so um, a, a taller uh, pot would be a good idea. Um, I used, I just grabbed this because I wanted to have a uh, prop when I said that you put this thing in a pot. So I'm gonna plug this in. Okay, so uh, it does not instantly turn on. Oh, it did, okay. It took a few seconds there. It's, so it, uh, it just switched itself on and started cooking. I'm not sure I actually appreciate that. Um, I would have liked to have had an opportunity to, to um, set it up the way I want. Let's, uh, I was not prepared for that to just turn on. Uh, it's kind of weird, because if you'd plugged it in before putting it in the pot, that would be a mistake. All right, there we go. That looks like a decent enough shot there. Um, nice screen. Uh, it does have... It's quite readable. I don't know why it randomly has a, uh, a, temper, a timer counting up from 20-some minutes. Um, I think it's telling me that the... This is really confusing. <laughs> the... Time, timer 28 minutes that's going up uh, at temp 74.3, set temp 32. Okay, so this must be the current temperature. I, I'm misreading what that label set temp uh, uh, applies to. So um, I guess it's set to 74.3 and the current temperature must be 32. Uh, and um, that would kind of make sense. Um, cold water out of the faucet. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this ring and see what happens. Absolutely nothing is happening. Um, I thought, oh no, it's, it's, okay, so no, the set, <laughs> this is kind of bizarre. This, this is, this is the current temperature. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't make any sense. That would be really cold water, wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> it would be frozen. Um, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm just confused, I'm so confused by this display. When you turn this ring, it, it does not, it's, it does, it's kind of janky feeling. Um, and uh, this, this wasn't really changing at first, but now I guess, I guess it's kind of, yeah. Why it would start so low? All right, 40. So I feel now I've turned it, as soon as it hit 40, uh, it turned yellow and a little thermometer appeared in the corner. Is that temperature, is that set temperature in Celsius? Or is it in, Fahrenheit, and if so, why is this in Fahrenheit? Ah, what is it doing? Um, I really can't tell. Now it's turned. It, I turned it up more, and the, the little thermos thermometer went away. That's weird. Between some range, forty up to one hundred and twenty-three. Four, something. I can't. No, it's somewhere. 130. Uh, it's yellow. No, I have no idea what I'm looking at here. This is confusing the crap out of me. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead then and press, uh, I'm going to press the little, I don't know what that is. Um, all right, that, that, that made a little line of timer done. Um, okay, that, so that reset the timer and that starts the timer. Oh, does that look like a clock to you? Uh, let me look in the manual. Um, that's labeled action button. So according to the manual, focus, D, you see D apparently, action button, does not say clears timer button, but uh, the timer is counting up there and if you press this, it just goes to zero and then if you press it again, it uh, starts counting up again. It says timer done, but it starts counting up. Um, okay, well let's try the menu button. I, it's, the water is heating, so um, I'm not sure that I would agree with that assessment of the temperature. It's, uh, all right, it doesn't feel like 85, but I right, will, uh, we'll go ahead and, uh, that's fine. I actually have a thermocouple here. Well, no, no, we're not going to get into that. I press menu. So here we go. Main menu. We got set timer, change units to C. All right. So if I, if I press select, oh no, that's, huh. Oh, okay. I guess I have to turn this down. That's weird. So when you select set timer, it just goes, ah, now the ring is setting the timer. I got it. So that's minutes and seconds or hours and minutes. I would guess hours and minutes. Um, it's rare. You're not going to sous vide anything to the second. So let's just say that that's good, right? And now presumably our timer is, is go. No. So it is minutes and seconds, um, which is completely weird. I mean, unless it's just a general purpose kitchen timer. And it's, it's really easy. If you accidentally press this button, you're going to whack your timer. Hmm. All right, so let's set timer. Uh, I have to assume that when you get above um, 60 minutes, maybe it'll go into an hour. Okay, it added the hours on. If you forget, forget it's a you know it's a dot matrix screen, so they can do that. But still, I don't really need the seconds. Okay, uh, change units to C. So that'll okay. So everything is in sync. So now we're in C and C. Um, yeah. Okay. 99, so it's not, it's just 100 degrees. Yeah, that, that feels quite warm. So that's, it's working. The heater is clearly working. Let me turn the temperature down then. How do I get, so I was in a timer. I want to set the temperature now. Oh, set, no, set timer, select. Um, I'm happy with the timer. I want to set temperature. That is weird. I cannot. I don't know what I did to get that there. But let's say I want to set this to 105. 105. Come on. My light is flashing. That's weird. Okay, 105.0. It's still heating. Maybe. Can't tell. It's 106 now. Have I set it? Do I have to do something to lock it in? I'm so confused. Uh, is it saying here? Plug in the power cord, turn the knob to set temperature, pair with apps. Uh-huh. So it's... I mean, there's going to be some, some hysteresis in here, right? It can't... It's, the heater goes off and it's not gonna... Well... I don't know that, it, that that's fair. Uh... It looks like, based on the fact that it, it's climbing more slowly and it's sort of... Well, it's still climbing, but it's climbing more slowly. Um, it may have reached the set temperature. Uh, yeah, it's it's going down now. So this will um, this will oscillate around 105. Uh, the thing about about these machines, they're they're meant to be very very accurate. The, certainly the lab ones, you know, they're they're made for um, you know uh, and biological stuff, you know. So uh, you know they can maintain very very uh, accurate temperature. The uh, the Sans Air seems to do a pretty good job. Um, you know, it'll fluctuate by, you know, fractions of a degree, point, you know, point three. Uh, we'll see how this does. I mean, it may have been that I was adjusting it on the fly, and so it didn't have a chance to ramp or whatever. It, you know, it might, could be a lot fancier. Um, all right, let's go back into the menu here and see what else we've got. Settings. Select. Uh, okay, we got Wi-Fi. Pairing. I guess is that Bluetooth? Is that Bluetooth and Wi-Fi? Not going to mess with that. Status. Settings. Status. 
So I've got a serial number and some some information, <laughs> MAC address and such. Back or select? Let's go with select. Select. Yeah. Okay, so this software maybe not so brilliantly thought through. Set up Wi-Fi, pair device, enable Wi-Fi. Those kind of seem like the same thing. Um, update firmware and fat. What is update firmware? <laughs> Presumably you have to be on Wi-Fi, yeah. Hold on, please connect to Wi-Fi. Okay, so let's see what else we got in here. Uh, quick start, that's an interesting option to have in here. Ah, okay, so this is basically turned on my, uh, turned on my Wi-Fi and it's giving me a passcode to get started, so forget that, I'm not interested. Uh-oh. It crashed. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I don't know if that was, maybe that's intentional when you go into quick start and then, and then exit back out of it. Uh, it turns off the white, you know, maybe it reboots on purpose. I guess there's one way to find out. Uh, let's just do that again. We'll go to quick start, select, cancel. Cancel. It's really hard to hit these buttons. Yeah. So when, and when you quit out of there, there's a weird delay and then it seems to reboot, which of course turns the, uh, Turns the, the power off. All right, so uh, anyway, that's this has gone on long enough. Um, this is the new No Miku uh, sous vide. It seems to be a decent enough unit. Um, it, I figured, I think when the Kickstarter for this came up, I thought, I, 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 I like this. I've used this, uh, here, this is the Sanzer. I've used it quite a bit. Um, and uh, sometimes when you're doing something, you know, if you're making a steak, Maybe you want to make some vegetables that go with it or something like that. It can be handy to have two of these. Uh, totally superfluous, of course, but um, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, uh, but it's better late than never, I suppose. Um, people are frustrated, and that's uh, the reason that I decided to make this unboxing. <clears throat> For those who are still waiting, uh, I don't know if it's better that you can see you can see what you're waiting for, um, and maybe uh, you're happy about that, or maybe you're pissed off about that. Uh, hard to say. Um, but uh, I've got mine uh, again, backer number twenty-four forty-nine ish, or something. So they are shipping. Uh, give them credit for not um, disappearing and running away, like a certain three D printer. I'm gonna try this one out. I might cook something tonight or tomorrow um, and see how this works. And uh, I'll play with the Wi-Fi, etc. and uh, maybe I'll do a follow-up. But uh, until then, whatever. Okay, quick follow-up. As I said I would do, I tried the thing out. Uh, I took a frozen piece of Chilean sea bass and I set it to 134 degrees in the Nomiku um, I put some salt and pepper and olive oil on the fish, put it in the bag, vacuum sealed it, put it in the pot of water, and cooked it for an hour and a half uh, at 134. Uh, it came out great. Totally recommend doing that, by the way. It's like it poaches itself in its own fat, and it just is uh, tremendous. Um, but as far as the Nomiku itself, uh, it worked just great. I set it to 134. It heated quickly. Uh, it maintained the set temperature spot on. Uh, I think the stuff I was seeing earlier in my video was because I was adjusting, you know, I had already set it to heat higher and then I turned it down. So anyway, I wanted to say that the thing worked great. And the only thing that didn't work great uh, was the app. I did set up the Wi-Fi and I installed the app. Um, and it's kind of superfluous. You can do everything from the screen, but I thought, okay, the app at least you know, when you first put it in, you gotta wait for the water to preheat to the right temperature, so it's gonna notify me when it hits that temperature, right? It didn't appear to do that. Um, and so then I'm like, okay, well, maybe that's a little fancy, but the timer set to an hour and a half, so it's at least gonna tell me when the time is up, right? Nope, I was in the kitchen watching it count down, you know, five, four, three, two, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, you know, starts counting up after it's done, and um, I got nothing on the phone, so. That was a bit strange. Maybe I need to opt in 
somewhere to notifications inside of the app, but uh, I did not did not receive that. It doesn't even have a beeper in the unit, so it's kind of like having a timer on it. Uh, it's it's like you need to set another timer if you actually want a reminder. Um, that was a little weird, but you know who cares if the app is is pointless. Um, the thing itself uh, works just fine. So. If you're in the market for a sous vide circulator, the Nomiku seems to be a perfectly fine choice. The um, Sanzer seems to be a perfectly fine choice as well. Uh, and I don't know about the other ones. You can get one from Chef Steps. I think they had a crowdfunding thing and they are sold out, but they're going to do another round. Um, you can get the probably still get the sous vide Supreme, which is a big boxy thing that you know that was out a long time ago. It cost a lot of money. Um, it takes up a lot of counter space. I don't have one, um, and then I think there's there's another one that is pretty popular. I forget the name of it. Um, maybe starts with an S. Uh, and then there's like this mellow. I think is the other one that's not shipped yet. That's like a, it's like a fish tank that you. Uh, I think that's the one that actually keeps the stuff cold. And then so you can like put it in the morning before you leave for work, and then it'll. Prevent it from spoiling uh, throughout the day, and then it'll switch over and start cooking so it's ready when you get home, which is an interesting idea. Um, and uh, yeah, so you know, like I said in the video, I think this is a tool that uh, you know, if you're, you know, if you can afford to have a you know a food processor or something, you know, any other sort of like kitchen thing that's useful but not absolutely necessary, um, this kind of falls in that category, like. Um, you know, they'll they'll come down and down in price, and you know it's not that complicated of an idea, right? So you'll be able to get one for you know sixty dollars or whatever at some point, and it'll be fine. So you know you can go out and you can spend two fifty now. Um, you can wait a few years and you know get one when they're cheap. You'll probably get one if you don't already have one because it's a useful thing to have. Um, uh, you know, other than that, that's all I have to say. So. Um, yeah, I like it. Uh, I'm glad I, you know, I got got into the Kickstarter, so uh, you know, that's a, a more reasonable price to pay for it. And uh, if you know, if I learn any more, if it craps out after a couple of days of use, I will certainly follow up with another video. And uh, until then, that's all I have to say.